Morning everyone. So this morning I am wearing grey and the reason I'm wearing grey is because I'm going to be talking about floating and specifically about Shopify's approach to cancelling all meetings with more than two people in them plus other things and how actually this could be indicative of a bigger problem and I'm not sure that their answer is necessarily the solution. But before we talk about that, let's just talk quickly about the colours. We've got the three green behaviours, thinking, communicating and improving. Those are the things, if you have them in your calendar in the right proportion, will take you, your people and your organisation upwards, make things better, because they're the essence of leading. And that's some of the stuff that leaders need to do as well as when you're leading yourself, of course. Then there's the two amber behaviours, monitoring and directing. Those are the things that maintain status quo, keep things where they are, keep things in balance and manage risk. And that's because they're the essence of managing. And that's some of the stuff that managers need to do, including when you're managing yourself. Then there's red doing, that's productivity, that's earning money either directly or indirectly. And then there's grey, and grey is for floating. That's when you're not adding value or you're not sure what value you're adding. It's a grey area. And that's the stuff that's going to drag you backwards. That's what's effectively wasting time within your organisation. But then there's one more really important one and it's blue. Blue is living. Living is about looking after your physical, mental, spiritual and emotional well-being. It's about looking after yourself outside of work so that you can bring the best of yourself to work. So today I was sent an article by my best friend written by uh, a lady called Emma Jacobs in the FT and it was talking about Shopify's New Year's resolution which was to ban meetings of, I think they said ban, maybe it's council meetings of more than two people, but they also went further. They also made it so that any meetings that were contained over 50 people would only happen between 11 and five, I think it was on a Thursday, and banning certain meetings altogether on certain days. And the whole reason they're doing this is because they believe that uh, meetings are a waste of time. And you know what? I kind of agree but only to a certain extent. A lot of meetings are a waste of time. When I go into organisations and run a discovery, what it generally says is that by people's own admission within the organisation I'm visiting, they think that about 20% of their time is completely wasted, is actually spent on the grey stuff, floating. 20%, that's one day a week, okay? And then when I deep, dig, deep, uh, dig further, dig deeper, and I ask them, well, what constitutes the majority of that 20% of time? Often it comes out as meetings. So in the face of it, you think to yourself, well, Emma's, um, Emma's article about Shopify seems to be on point, right? Shopify have kind of nailed it. They've said, well, let's cancel the meetings of a certain type. The problem is not all meetings over two people are a waste of time. Not all meetings on a Wednesday, let's say, would have been a waste of time. And not all meetings over 50 people would be a waste of time. And I'm a big believer in the broader the policy the company sets, the less the actual real problem is really understood. What it says to me when companies like this, and HSBC I think did it a couple of years ago, Shopify are doing it now, and others are jumping on the bandwagon, is it basically says that there is either an issue with their people either having the skills, the self-awareness, the language, or the psychological safety, in order to be able to have a conversation with each other about what time really is wasted in these meetings. Okay, and that's the whole point of grey behaviour, it's the whole point of floating, and it's the whole point of the, of the diary detox discovery, right? What if that meeting with more than two people would have added a huge amount of value? What if the meeting on a Tuesday, for example, when things would normally have been banned, was a useful meeting? And what if the meeting that would have been arranged on the day that you've now banned that meeting on would have been a really, really useful meeting? You've just blanket said you can't have that meeting. And I think that's a step too far. What we need to be doing is giving employees, like I said, the skills, the self-awareness, the language, and also the psychological safety to be able to have a conversation with each other. Further down in Emma's article, and I will post it here, I'll put it below in the comments so you can read it. There was also one where somebody had said that they, they usually invite people to a meeting because they're worried those people will feel left out. And I think there's an onus, not only on the people going to a meeting, but also the people arranging a meeting. Whilst going to a meeting, you should think to yourself, well, what color is this meeting gonna be for me? Is it gonna be green? Is it gonna be amber? Is it gonna be red? Or is it going to be gray? and then allowing people to have a conversation around that. 
I think the person organising the meeting should also have that responsibility as well. I think they should be saying, well, if I invite this person, what colour is it going to be for them? What colour is it going to be for that person? And what colour is it going to be for that person? And if you don't know, if you're the person going to the meeting and you don't know what colour it is, or if you're the person inviting someone to the meeting and you don't know what colour it is for them, it's already grey. You need to ask more questions. Don't invite somebody to a meeting unless you know what colour it is for them. So remember, 20% of the time, companies are saying their people, actually people in companies are saying, they feel their time is wasted. And we're not having that conversation about it. If you wanna find out what's going on in your company, why not have a discovery yourself? Just visit me, book a chat with me, we can have a conversation. But in the meantime, don't make broad policies because it generally suggests you haven't fully understood the challenge. That's it for me. Love to get your comments below. And I, like I said, I'll put the uh, article from Emma Jacobs below as well. In the meantime, have a great day. Have a great week.